A network of one-way streets is shown in the diagram to the left, where I have to find the possible flows F sub 1 through F sub 6 along each street. We will assume each flow rate is in cars per hour. To solve this problem, we will use the junction rule. The junction rule states that at each junction or intersection, the total flow in must equal the total flow out. So to solve the problem, we'll have an equation for each intersection. Looking at intersection A, we have one flow rate in and three flow rates out. The flow rate in is 500 cars per hour. The flow rates out are F sub one, F sub two, and F sub three. Which means the equation is 500 equals F sub one plus F sub two plus F sub three. Now let's focus on intersection B. Notice how there are three flow rates in, F sub one, F sub four, and F sub six, and the flow rate out is 400 cars per hour. The corresponding equation is F sub one plus F sub four plus F sub six equals 400. Moving along to intersection C, Notice there are two flow rates in, F sub three and F sub five, and there are two flow rates out, 100 cars per hour and F sub six, giving us the equation F sub three plus F sub five must equal 100 plus F sub six. And now for intersection D, there is one flow rate in, F sub two, and there are two flow rates out, F sub four and F sub five, and therefore the equation is F sub two is equal to F sub four plus F sub five. And now for the next step, we'll write each equation in standard form, meaning we have all the variable terms on the left and the constants on the right. For the first equation, we can just reverse the order giving us F sub one plus F sub two plus F sub three equals 500. The second equation is already in standard form. For the third equation, we subtract F sub six on both sides, which gives us F sub three plus F sub five minus F sub six equals 100. And for the fourth equation, we set the right side equal to zero by subtracting F sub four and subtracting F sub five, which gives us F sub two minus F sub four minus F sub five equals zero. From here, we'll write an augmented matrix, and then to solve, we'll write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Because we have four equations with six unknowns, we will have a four by seven augmented matrix. At the top, we have the equations, so using the equations that we just found, we write the augmented matrix, where each equation gives us one row in the augmented matrix. F sub one plus F sub two plus F sub three equals 500, gives us the row one, 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 zero, 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 500. Notice how we have zeros for the columns F sub four, F sub five, and F sub six, because these terms are not in the equation. In the second equation, we have F sub one plus F sub four plus F sub six equals 400, which gives us the row one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 400. For the third equation, we have F sub three plus F sub five minus F sub six equals 100, which gives us a third row of zero, zero, one, zero, one, negative one, 100. And the fourth equation of F sub two minus F sub four minus F sub five equals zero, gives us the row zero, one, zero, negative one, negative one, zero, zero. For the next step, we write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here on the right to save time. Looking at the matrix in reduced row echelon form, let's identify the pivots, which are the first non-zero elements in each row, which are here, here, and here, which indicate the leading variables or basic variables are F sub one, F sub two, and F sub three, this also tells us that F sub four, F sub five, and F sub six are all free variables. And now let's write the equations represented by each row. 
the first row indicates that f sub 1 plus f sub 4 plus f sub 6 equals 400. The second row indicates that f sub 2 minus f sub 4 minus f sub 5 equals 0. The third row indicates that f sub 3 plus f sub 5 minus f sub 6 equals 100. Because the leading variables are basic variables are f sub 1, f sub 2, and f sub 3, and the free variables are f sub 4, f sub 5, and f sub 6, we will now express f sub 1, f sub 2, and f sub 3 in terms of the free variables. Which means for this first equation, we subtract f sub 4 and subtract f sub 6 on both sides, which gives us f sub 1 equals 400 minus f sub 4 minus f sub 6. In the second equation, we add f sub 4 and add f sub 5 to both sides, which give us f sub 2 is equal to f sub 4 plus f sub 5. And for the third equation, we subtract f sub 5 on both sides and add f sub 6 to both sides, which gives us f sub 3 equals 100 minus f sub 5 plus f sub 6. So these three equations do express all the possible flow rates. However, there are restrictions on f sub 1 through f sub 6. Normally the free variables can take on any value, but in this case, the flow rates must be non-negative. So to begin the restrictions, we know f sub 4, f sub 5, and f sub 6 must be greater than or equal to 0. But f sub 1 through f sub 3 must also be non-negative. So looking at the equation for f sub 1, we must recognize that 400 minus f sub 4 minus f sub 6 must be greater than or equal to 0. So if we add f sub 4 and add f sub 6 to both sides, we would have the condition that f sub 4 plus f sub 6 must be less than or equal to 400. Notice how if we added f sub 4 and f sub 6 to both sides and just change the order of the inequality, we would have this inequality here. And then for f sub 2, f sub 4 plus f sub 5 must be greater than or equal to 0. But that condition is already met since we know f sub 4 and f sub 5 are both greater than or equal to 0. But f sub 3 must also be non-negative, and therefore 100 minus f sub 5 plus f sub 6 must be greater than or equal to 0. Using this inequality, let's add f sub 5 to both sides and subtract f sub 6 to both sides, which gives us a condition f sub 5 minus f sub 6 must be less than or equal to 100. So these three equations do express all the possible flow rates given these conditions for f sub 1 through f sub 6 are met. I hope you found this helpful.